Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? I think we can call the meeting to order with um, with three of us. So we'll go ahead. Um, let's see, I think ACMI is recording. So we will call to order the May 3rd meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. Good evening. This open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For this meeting, the redevelopment board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So we'll now take a roll call vote to ensure that all of the members of the redevelopment board and uh, members of the Department of Planning and Community Development are here. We'll start with Ken Lau. Here. Uh, Eugene Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalis. Present. And I'm Rachel Zemberry, and I'm here. Uh, and from the department, we have Jennifer Rate. Present. And uh, Kelly Linema. Here. Great, thank you. So let's see, moving into the first item on our agenda this evening, uh, which is docket number 3650, a continued public hearing for 190 and 192 to 200 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, we have received a request from the applicant to continue the hearing to June 7th. So I'll first uh, maybe start by uh, asking Jenny to confirm that that date does in fact work with our agenda. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. I'm having a screen sharing problem, which hopefully will not continue throughout this meeting. Um, no problem. Yes, June 7th was confirmed as the next possible option. Great, so I'll open it up for uh, board discussion. Any any questions or concerns with that request, starting with Ken? No, uh, no question. I like the fact that they are requesting an extension to work on having more commercial space on the first floor. Great, Jean? Uh, the extension is fine with me. Great, Melissa? Yep, fine with me. Great. Um, any other discussion by the board? And I'll open it up for a brief public comment. All right. Uh, any members of the public who have any questions about this request for extension, please uh, let me know by raising using the raise hand function. Seeing none, we will close public comments and move to a vote. Is there a motion to uh, extend, uh, excuse me, to, uh, to grant a continuation of the hearing to June 7th? So motion. Is there a second? second? Great, we'll take a roll call vote. <clears throat> Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So uh, docket number 3650 is continued to June 7th. Um, I'll also just note that we received as correspondence, um, which you all should have seen posted in Nova's agenda, a letter to withdraw 10 Sunnyside. Um, it looks like that applicant is going to be um, rethinking their, their application. Uh, so we have not um, received, I, I don't believe the official notice though, correct, Jenny? We, um, we have received that, yes. Oh, we it, did receive just, that. Yeah, we did receive that. It's okay. just, and it's been posted as correspondence received. So you just need to accept it as correspondence and we'll pick it up at the next meeting on the 17th. Great. So that has been noted as correspondence received. Um, so that closes agenda item number one. We'll now move to agenda item number two, uh, which are 
uh, department updates to the housing production plan and open space and recreation plan. And I'll turn it over to Jenny. Thank you. I'm hoping that I can share this. Um, if I can't, I might need, Kelly, I might need to, you to do this. Um, I haven't had this problem before, so, okay. Did that work? Seems like it. Something's working, okay. yes. We're and good. I'm not frozen? <laughs> You're good. Okay, great. <laughs> That's two things, so great. Um, well, I'm just gonna start with the open space recreation plan, um, which is basically the plan that we have was a five-year plan with two different extensions. Um, so at this point, it's somewhat dated. Um, and is now going to uh, be updated through um, with the Arlington Open Space Committee leading um, that charge. I want to remind the board that Wendy Richter is the ARB's uh, designee to the Open Space Committee. And I think that at a future meeting, we should have her um, attend and perhaps provide an update. Um, what I provided in the materials are basically the proposal that we received and accepted. Um, and the public participation plan with the timeline. So I think um, it might just be easiest to see if the board has questions um, about any of the process. Um, and also just simply note that the first public forum is happening on June 10th. And where uh, we have the, the town's website is completely up to date with the Open Space Recreation Committee, uh, Open Space Committee's details related to this planning process and all of the documents will be posted on that page um, as well as any you know upcoming engagement opportunities. So are there any specific questions about the open space committee and or the open space recreation plan? We'll start with Ken. Uh, none right now, no. Jean? No, I don't have any like Melissa? Um, Jenny, I had a question in terms of kind of recreation and open space, would, would this group be looking at kind of, um, more like underutilized or like kind of public realm, like, you know, uh, parklet type stuff or alleyway kind of things? Um, they could look at those types of opportunities. Usually it's related to larger parcels of designated open space. Um, it's something that I can certainly bring to them as uh, something that you that is of interest. Um, it's not traditionally something that is explored in the open space recreation plan, but I think if you looked at it from more of like a pocket park or right. like a pop up, that kind of thing, I, I think that that would fit. Yeah, I mean, I think um, from my experience, it seems like, um, you know, kind of recreation rethinking some of those pocket type areas and kind of unique kind of underlying underutilized spaces um, that sometimes lay in um, commercial districts might have a nice kind of synergy with um, the you know local businesses so that you're able to activate it um, and maybe bring some play or fun that then attracts more foot traffic um, and I think that would be cool to add to our kind of recreation perspective. That's great. Thank you. So helpful. Great, thanks, Melissa. And Jenny, I agree just hearing Melissa speak about that. I know that that certainly dovetails well into what the um, Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan Committee has been speaking about in terms of how to activate some of the smaller open space areas. So I think that was a really great call out that Melissa made. Great. Um, Go ahead. Are there any other specific questions about the plan or the process? Um, or anything you're curious about. If not, I, I would love to see you participate at the June 10th forum. I do have um, a question, Ken, sorry. that's okay. Go ahead, Go ahead Ken. Um, I know years, years ago, Arlington bought uh, a bunch of uh, wetlands out in, um, I think the neighboring town, and it's still like acres and acres of wetland out there. Is that true, Jenny? I mean, yes, but it's it is a long time ago. It's just part of the town of Arlington, but it's technically in Lexington. But it's so, yes. But the is Great that Meadows. is that open space for us, or what is that? It is. 
Yes, and it's uh, it's talked about in both the master plan and the open space recreation plan it as is. a recreational opportunity and connection. And we've done a lot in the last uh, three or four years to make sure that we preserve a connection to that for the town of Arlington, um, especially since Lexington has gone through some um, has had some development pressures around that area, including in the area where people park to access that recreational opportunity. So we, we are actively engaged in both the open space committee in Arlington and Lexington communicate with one another um, to ensure and conservation commission to ensure that that stays a viable space and is I spent, I just, accessible to the town. I just found that out a couple of weeks ago, trying to uh, bicycle oh. right around there. And I didn't know that, uh, and I found out that we actually own it. Can, can I, I've been there, I've walked it. I've been lost in there, even with a map. It's a really interesting place. I'd recommend going and getting lost in there sometime. Uh, well, I was going to do that with my son, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's a great, up. I, I don't know. I, I didn't see much talk about that. I, I wouldn't mind exploring maybe using that as, as uh, as a great little park somewhere, you know, where we can. I'm not too sure too many people in Ireland to know about that. Okay. Um, you know, maybe we bring that up and say, "Hey, there's opportunities here." Like Jean said, that you can go there and and have a nice peaceful walk, and we're trying to maintain that. That's something we we're trying to encourage use of as a park. There's a map available online of the paths, and there's a committee, something like the Arlington Great Meadows. Yes. Committee that's worked on it for a long time. Okay. I did not know about that. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, I just... so these are all good ideas. And the fact that, you know, there's plenty more people who probably need to know about it and don't aren't aware of the opportunity, may not know about the parking, all kinds of things. So it's a it's a very good um, suggestion. And I'll make sure to mention that as well. Okay. Great. Thanks. Any other uh, questions or comments on um on the, the uh, this first one before we move to the housing production plan. Okay. Jenny, right. do you want to move to, the, and then we'll take public comment um, after we do both the outdoor space as well as the, the housing production plan, I think. Yes, um, time permitting, we do have to end the meeting. We do we have to end the, the meeting. The, Right, exactly. But I would, I would like to. I know that there are yes. some people who have joined, so I do want to make sure that we reserve yep. some time for. Yes, for absolutely. Um, so this is the the housing production plan, which we have uh, secured the services of Barrett Planning Group with the sub consultant Horsley Witten. Horsley Witten is also the consultant who's doing the open space recreation plan, but is the lead consultant on that team. Um, and uh, the housing plan implementation committee is the group that is serving as the, as it says here, de facto advisory committee. Um, they are going to be meeting this Thursday um, to kick off their discussion. Um, we are in the process of updating the webpage um, and we'll be issuing a press release shortly um, and intend to have a combination of focus groups and interviews um, sometime over the course of this month, varying times. We are aiming for a community meeting in June, although we've, we have stated that it will be June 2nd here. That is a little bit contingent upon the ending of town meeting. And um, if town meeting continues into the first week of June for some reason, possibly, then I think we would want to look at a following, we, we might wanna hold uh, another date in June. Um, so that we give people some breathing room. Um, the June 10th, as I mentioned, is the date currently being held for the Open Space Recreation Plan Forum, and I would prefer not to have two forums that week. So I'm looking at the week after that. That would be the first meeting. And usually what happens at that meeting is sharing of information about the current you know, demographics, housing trends, market trends, um, and it, based upon what you're reading here, of course, there would be uh, engagement, not just sharing of information, but engaging with the data and information and also learning new things, perhaps people's reactions to that information um, so that we can then uh, develop the needs assessment, which is essentially a combination of understanding the needs, but also starting to look at some of the projected demand for different types of housing. Um, and uh, 
another community would be held in the summer in August, uh, where we would be pre presenting the findings of that needs assessment and then starting to think about the goals for the plan. Uh, not stated here, but also as part of that process, we'll be looking at some of the um, impediments to being able to, um, you know, sort of the current capacity or resources, but also any other impediments that may make it challenging to develop new housing in Arlington. So that'll also be uh, embedded in this community meeting. Um, we're gonna do, uh, we decided to wait on a survey just because there's been, we've gotten some feedback that there's a little bit of survey fatigue in the community right now. Um, we also have various surveys about housing topics uh, from the past year that we can utilize. Um, but later on, we are planning on having an online implementation survey to get feedback on strategies and the findings will be reported out to help us to develop the draft implementation plan. And then there would be a third community meeting in October where we would be presenting that draft imp implementation plan, um, providing an overview of the public participation process. Um, and at that point, really start to draft the housing production plan itself, which would then include a presentation to the redevelopment board, some right here projected by the end of October, um, and also to eventually the select board because both boards adopt the plan and uh, then it is submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development as uh, to get approved. Um, I'm gonna pause there. Are there any questions? So we'll start with uh, Ken. No. Jean? Yes, can, can you pull up, I think it's about a page later, the, the um, groups that are listed for outreach? Great. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a preliminary list, by the way. We've been, we've been adding quite a okay. bit to this list. Uh, but if you have other suggestions, I would uh, ask that you perhaps send them to me directly. I'm, I'm glad to take them this evening, but in general, if you think of other people, that would also be helpful, but please go ahead, Jean. Okay, yeah, I, I'll send them, I'll email you um, okay. some suggestions yeah. for um, potential additions. Um, I guess the other piece I'm thinking about is how we get from the end of this plan in let's say October to potential changes to the zoning bylaw next spring. So, I mean, I know this is still a work in progress, but if you feel comfortable about addressing that briefly, I think that would be helpful. Absolutely, I'm glad to. That's, uh, that's the part we've talked about before, which is that we would have the strategy discussions happening at the end of the summer and into fall with the community. Um, to make sure that we're going in the right direction and that we would then, you know, as part of the strategies, some of them may be regulatory, others may be non-regulatory. For those things that are regulatory in nature, I think that we will have a, as part of this plan, it's gonna be a strategy. It's not gonna be a completely developed warrant article, let's just say, or a, a specific amendment to the zoning bylaw, just like the current housing production plan. It'll probably state something like, um, you know, amend the inclusionary zoning bylaw or amend the zoning bylaw to increase housing affordability could be a number of different things but there'll be probably some broad statements and then some suggestions for how to act and follow up and that would be utilized in the fall which i think timing wise makes sense because we have a few months to develop a warrant article and then the timing to file it is usually at the end of january for the following town meeting um, and that could be, you know, again, depending upon how the redevelopment board feels about any zoning articles, that might be uh, an okay amount of time between when the plan is being vetted for strategies and when you can start at least carrying out the first year goals, because it is a five year plan, uh, just to remind folks. So it's a five year plan. And so if in year one, you want to implement some of the zoning amendments or try to, um, that would be my suggestion. And there could be other regulatory issues as well that relate to the town bylaws. Um, for example, protections for renters. If that was something that the town was interested in, that would follow a similar process, but with the select board. Yeah, and then perhaps, you. yeah, with the ARB, you know, weighing in. Thanks. Does that, was that 
specific enough? Yes, thanks. Okay. So Melissa, um, I, I'd love to take your comments, but if I could just quickly, I, I piggyback on what Jenny and, and Jean were just speaking to. I wonder if, um, I, I think it would be a good idea for us to just think a little bit more this, this summer um, and plan for what the steps would be, um, should there be any, whether they're zoning or, or town by, by law regulatory changes and identify what a process would, would be. You know, for example, if this is being presented on October 29th um, to the Select Board and Redevelopment Board, would we then, would it be in our best interest to hold a joint meeting following that to identify what our priorities are um, and make sure that we calendar that out well, well in advance because we know how hard that is um, such that we, uh, the Select Board and the Redevelopment Board identify what what specific items we do want to pursue in year one versus future years. And then I think also give a heads up to the um, zoning bylaw working group and make sure that if there's some interface that we wanna have with, with that group leading up to the end of January for the spring 2022 um, town meeting warrant articles that we just identify what the process will be well in advance so that we're not trying to squeeze things in um, in what it also becomes a highly meeting intensive time of year. Um, Alyssa, any questions or comments? Um, no, I think one, uh, I guess one thing to think about as strategies are being developed would be, you know, if it's, if it's helpful, it's helpful for, I guess, me and I think understanding um, which ones kind of work together. Sometimes some strategies and some implementations stand alone um, and then some work better in a package. So if, um, you know, as these are being developed and the consultant can kind of be explicit about what needs to kind of be, you know, kind of work together best would be helpful as this goes on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks for both of those comments, by the way, Rachel and Melissa. Taking a note about that. I should mention that um, Kelly is, uh, in the absence of the assistant director, Kelly is assisting with this process as well as other things um, until we hire a full time assistant director. And so she'll be uh, one of the things that she was tasked with doing is to work on that contact list. And we are hoping to send emails out um, to those contacts. So just to go back to that point. Um, the comment raised by Jean. If you could send any comments about or additions to that list <clears throat> by um, Wednesday, Thursday, Kelly? Yeah, I think uh, if we can get them by midweek, that way I can turn them over to their planning group, that would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Sweet. Any other questions? I think um, Jenny and Kelly, these are incredibly comprehensive proposals. It's really exciting that both of these are going to be undertaken this summer. And I think um, really speaks to a lot of the engagement that a lot of the public have been um, looking looking for on, on both of these topics. So I think it's a, um, I'm, I'm so happy to see that immediately following town meeting, we're going to be having both of these kicking off um, because I think they're, they'll be really meaningful to the town. Excellent, I'm glad to hear that, and I agree. I, I wanna mention one other thing, which is the community conversation series that was hosted last summer um, and a little bit into the fall. Um, are, they're going to actually continue uh, picking up next month, and then uh, one of them will be about fair housing, um, and we'll, I'll be working with Jill Harvey and others in, on her team to put together a fair housing panel. And I think that that will occur just as a, just so that you can make a note of this at some point um, in, in the middle of July. And it'll, it will be at this point in the same format, I believe as last summer, but I will, once I have a little bit more information about it, and of course, many details, I will share them with the board. But I feel that that dovetail, dovetails very nicely with this project as well. Great, thanks, absolutely. I think, um, you know, again, I think it's been our, our view that having a comprehensive discussion about all of these, these issues together is really important. So I agree that that does sound like it dovetails really nicely. 
so let's see, let's go ahead and open this up to the public for any uh, questions or comments. Um, so if you could use the raise hand feature, I will call on you in the order that your hands are raised. Please note that any member of the public wishing to speak, you will have uh, up to three minutes and please identify yourselves by your first, last name and address. And the first speaker tonight will be Jennifer Seuss. Hi, um, uh, Jennifer Seuss, uh, 45 Teal Street, uh, Precinct 3. Um, so I'm excited this is happening. Um, I think that the, it's important to have to start these community conversations. Um, I worry about a couple of things. One thing is the worry about sort of the second meeting, which seems pretty important, being at the end of August. And I have done a lot of community <laughs> activism over the past few years. And I know that there's a summer brain that takes over and it's just very, and people are on vacation. It's just very hard. And I was wondering if there's any way that that conversation could happen after Labor Day. There's just sort of a, people just kick into a different kind of gear after Labor Day, I found. Um, I also wonder about the place of two kinds of um, sort of discussions, conversations I think are really important and whether they're, they should be here or they should be somewhere else. And so one other place it could be, um, I'm blanking, Vision 2020, whatever the new name is, the, you know, could also do these kind of conversations. One thing is, I don't think people really understand how our zoning is not working for us. And I think there just has to be a lot of education around that. You know, here's our current problems. Because I remember, you know, in 2019, when I went to a bunch of these community meetings, I remember walking out with people and the common theme was people saying, why are we doing this? What's the problem? What are we trying to solve? You know, just sort of, and so I think there just needs to be a full educational, like a, a, an evening a focus, a you know, push on really trying to educate people about what is and isn't working for us. The other thing that I think um, we need to do is allow some sort of open-ended conversation where people suggest ideas. And you know that you're going to get people suggesting that we should build nothing, right? <laughs> but you're also going to get people suggesting some really sort of more progressive or radical, you know, you're going to get the gambit, right? And, you, and out of that, you get a couple of things. One is you get people feeling heard and listened to, which is really important to have in this early part of the process, that people, even if they can't get what they want, that they feel that somebody listened to them. The second thing is, is that sometimes you could get a good idea, right? And we know that some of our challenge, some of the goals that we want to, to do can be done in many different ways. So for example, the 40A, you know, adjustment that we're going to have to make, there's lots of different ways to satisfy it. So hearing from the community in sort of a very open-ended way to hear, you know, do we want to see more three families? Do we want to see larger buildings? You know, that kind of thing, like just, just sort of getting a, a feel for what people, ha what ideas are out there would be, I think, helpful. Because as, as brilliant as the planning department is, and I, I think highly of people, it's, it's good to sometimes have more heads you know, more thoughts on these type of issues. Um, and also, again, it's really good for community sort of feel goodness to, to have that process where people feel that they're not being too managed and there's an opportunity for them to genuinely express their opinion. Um, so that's, I'm interested in talking to people more about how those could happen. Again, either whether they're these discussions or maybe they're other discussions that are run by different people. So just to have a conversation about that. Great, thank you so much. I think you raised a couple of really good points. Jenny, did you want to um, yeah. address a couple of those? Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you, Jennifer. I, I appreciate those comments very much. And we've talked about this before and mm -hmm. um, I think it'll be great to have you being a part of all those discussions. Um, the first comment about the second meeting is a very valid one. I was worried about that one too. Um, I think we'll, we'll probably still be in Zoom land I wonder if by September we will be able to meet in person with some good infrastructure around us. I don't know the answer to that yet. Um, I agree though that people could still be away or in summer brain um, in, in late August. So I will, I will explore that with the consultant to see what I can do. I, okay. What I'm ultimately trying to communicate is if we do move to that timeline, I hope it can be in person. Because I just mm -hmm. think in general, it'll be especially that that meeting and the, the following one will be important mm -hmm. to be a little more human. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the second comment about Envision Arlington. Mm -hmm. 
is a good one. And they are very interested in this topic. And so is the Arlington Human Rights Commission. Um, they have a housing subcommittee, I wanna say, working group, forgetting what they're calling themselves. I apologize. I believe it's one of those. Um, but the, and that those two bodies are very interested and will be participating in these dialogues. Um, they are aware of the process and the timeline. Um, I think they have other forums also in mind that they're starting to sketch out. Um, and I think that the one that you're suggesting about how our zoning is not working for us, those are your words, um, <laughs> in the sort of educational meeting could be easily hosted by Envision Arlington. I can discuss that with co-chairs, um, Scott and Greg, and um, see what their thoughts are. The last point that you made, I just want to mention, we actually started when we thought we were moving in the direction of housing conversations last year. Some of you might recall, we, we actually started with a, a question campaign with exactly the intent of doing what you're talking about. So maybe um, I can try to figure out how we might do something like that or integrate something like what you're talking about into this. Or also, I don't know if you saw the um, strategy or the method that we're going to use for the open space recreation plan where there's going to be like talking posts throughout town. Um, to basically give feedback at specific open space and park places across town um, that's sort of more interactive. I suppose we could try to do something similar, but with housing, I'd have to think about that one. But I, I think overall, I get your point, and I, I'll try to talk with other folks about uh, a way to kind of get it not feel so structured as a conversation, mm -hmm. I think is your, your overarching point. Right. I, I also think it's really important that people hear each other because people live in their own sort of intellectual bubbles and they think, oh, the way I think is the way everyone thinks. So getting, hearing other people's perspective can be really valuable in that kind of open meeting. Agree. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Jenny, for the clarifications and Jennifer yep. for your questions. Uh, the next speaker tonight will be Barbara Thornton. Thank you very much. I, I just wanted to raise the uh, possibility, uh, and I think I think probably Jenny has it in her head, but just to say publicly, uh, I've got Article 81 pending out there for a design competition, and I am I think this would be a terrific uh, tool for expanding the the project that you're doing and getting more people involved in thinking about Arlington and the, and the design competition idea is based on uh, building on the Broadway quarter study as well as the state's uh, decision to uh, do transit area districts planning and um, and it's essentially to bring in some outside designers architecture firms in a competition to meet certain goals for that e East Arlington area and uh, I delighted that some of the people that I'm hearing from, because it's not a very well-known concept um, or um, article, uh, seem really pleased about it. So I'm hoping that we can figure out a way that we can work that in as part of a tool and the platform of spreading the word and getting more different, as, as Jennifer said, more different voices and, and, and people involved in thinking about uh, actually what the town might look like. Great, thank you, Barbara. I think that's a really um, creative way of, of, of looking at this, uh, how we can extend uh, the work that we're trying to do for both of these, these articles as well. And we are uh, definitely thinking about a way to do that in the fall. Great, thank you. And um, to Barbara's article 81, which she's talking about is about the Broadway corridor study, um, but it also, lends into reopening a conversation when I would I would hope by then we would have guidance from MassDOT and the Department of Housing and Community Development regarding the MBTA communities requirement um, and how um, what that will mean for Arlington and what kind of planning activity we need to do around that. I'm not in a position to respond to how we want to blend the two together just yet, but I think in, in spirit it is definitely something we should do and that timing would generally speaking work. Great. Great. Yeah, I think it, the more open-ended it is where the architects just, I mean, they may come in up with some real science fiction suggestions, I don't know, 
but it, the more open it is to wild and crazy as well as practical within the rules of the state government, uh, I think the more enticing it will be for conversation. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, any other members of the public uh, wishing to provide a comment or question on uh, these two uh, these two plans that will be reviewed over the next several months? Okay, seeing none, we will close public comment on article number, or excuse me, on agenda item number two. And I believe that brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. Jenny, did you have anything else? I do not have anything else. Great, any other discussion, uh, questions from the board members? Jean, Ken, Melissa? Well, I will give you a little bit more time back in your evening. I will see some of you at eight o'clock for, uh, for town meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? To town meeting. To town meeting. Yeah. Thank you for ensuring that I <laughs> added that moniker, modifier. Is there a motion to adjourn to town meeting? So motion. Is there a second? I can. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yep. And I am a yes as well. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night.